Hello friends, Ashton here. So in this video, I'm going to share a time tracker in Google Sheets for tracking your time for your own project. And uh, I mainly designed this one for myself to use, okay? And uh, if you are looking for some, something like this, and, and you, I think you can follow this instruction here. Uh, I post it on my website, so you can check here too. Uh, but I'm going to go through this in this video uh, to make sure I can cover most of the features we have. All right, so let's get started. And uh, here is the project you should be able to copy from. Uh, and we have the, basically we have some tabs here and uh, we have a report tab for sending the report to the client and we have a task. So this is going to be our main user interface for the time tracking. And uh, the record table here is going to save all the records for your, uh, for your time tracking. And uh, you have a, uh, have a project list and have a client list. So, so basically you add some client first, you add some client to this table and then you will be able to have this client list in the project list and you can set a project here maybe for Ella and I can say this is a project for a YouTube demo and uh, because we are using this project as a key for uh, reference all the information like the client name or the status and uh, most importantly, the hourly rate here is very important. Let's say this is 40 per hour. And, and so make sure this, this key, the project name is unique, okay? Because we are using VLOOKUP formulas to do the information, to pull this information into the task. So this has to be unique or it won't work, okay? So this is something you need to be, be aware of, okay? So like for example, I added this project and uh, if I'm going to my task and what I can do here, I can create a task here. Let's say this is task A and I can pick this project I just got, I just created for Ella and then you will see I have the project and the status, I can mark it active and this one in column D, I think is billable or not. So if this is a, this task is billable and uh, make sure this is checked and you can enter date here. And th these columns here, they are basically array formulas. Uh, I think not all of them are array formulas like this one for the client, cl the name of the client is array, array formulas to get that from this VLOOKUP formula. So by using uh, the project so that's why the project name has to be unique uh, so we can get the client name from that project and also we can get the hourly rate from that project and the time tracked and the cost for this task is going to be some if formulas to get the information from the records okay so right now we don't have any records for this new task so they are just zero zero here and uh, the main features is for time tracking so you to just select a row uh, basically a task you want to track and click on this start man uh, start button here and then it's going to start this task and we have a timer here so right now this is our our minute minute and um, because I think the minimum uh, interval is one minute in, in app script. So I'd like to refresh this uh, every one minute so I can do a second here. I think this is, the, this is the enough for refresh this one single minute. Uh, but if you want to do a second, you can do a manual update here, uh, but it won't refresh, okay? by every second, unless you do some change here, uh, it won't do the update for you. Uh, because when we, we started this, uh, this task, 
there is a backend trigger to run every minute, but we cannot run it every second. So this is not refreshed. Uh, so I suggest we just keep it here like one minute, uh, refreshed by every single minute. Uh, so we can get the data here like this. So right now this timer is active. Okay, so we are tracking for this task and uh, something you should be aware here is we have some hidden values. Okay, so you will see here in A1 here we have a 15. So this 15 here is basically the row index of this task. And that means when we have the task started, we should not change the position of this task. So that means you cannot sort the task. Uh, so at least you need to make sure the task you started is at 15 or you have to manually change this number here. And another hidden uh, cell here is, B, uh, is B1. So we have this start time in this B1 cell. So right now the font is, is white so you, you won't see it. But if I change the font to the the default font color, you will see this is a timestamp when we click on this star button. And uh, this is how we calculate the date uh, entry. So we have a star timestamp and then we're going to have an end timestamp uh, so we can record them uh, in the database. So let me just change it back to white. And uh, you will see we have some name range here. So this one's this task, basically the selected task. And then we have this start time here in this cell. Okay, so this is something you should be aware because you just for some case you just delete this value by accident or something. Uh, this could happen. So, and then what we can do here, uh, we can stop it. So this stop here we have three options. So you can you can click on yes. So if you click on yes, it's going to save a record to our record table and if you say no and then we're going to keep tracking the data uh, for this record and if you click on cancel then I'm going to cancel this task okay it won't, won't save any record to the database so for this demo I'm going to try yes and then it's going to save a record to the database and it's going to stop the timer and you will see here at this moment I have a a time uh, tracked for this task and uh, we have a estimate uh, it's just a cost for this time tracking okay and if you go to the table records table so you will see the task A for the project here and uh, this is billable or not so if this is not billable and the cost is zero okay it won't calculate this this as a as a cost for you and you will see here we have the, the start timestamp and the end timestamp so you can always have a reference uh, you can send this to your client because this is the actual time you spent on the task so let me just check this one so basically this table here uh, they're handled by the script but if you did something wrong I think you always have the chance to do some manual correction here and also you can enter them manually if you want all right uh, and here something also I'm using formulas to do the calculation for the the time so this time track is in hours and the cost here is array formula so they are in row 2 so make sure don't change don't delete this row here you can you can remove the other task if you don't need them and uh, at the first time, I think you should re remove them because they are just uh, some test data from my from my file, okay. And just keep it row two because they're formulas. And if you want to change something in the formulas, and I think you also can do the change. Just need to figure out how to do the formula change. All right. So this is a record we have here. So basically, a task started. And then you can just uh, stop it, just start and stop, similar, simple like this. And then you can keep tracking and you can track multiple, you know, input for the same task. 
And another thing here is important because we are also using this task name here to so it's not ideal, but this is right now the solution here in Google Sheets. Uh, we're using this as the key to get the data from, I think, in both the task name and uh, the project name. So let me check the formula. So we are sum if by the task and the project. So both column A and column B, just uh, if the task is unique in the project, and then we should be OK. All right, so that's about the time tracking feature here. And uh, the last one I'd like to share is this report. Okay, so in this report here, I'm using a query formula in cell A9. So you will see this is a query formula to pull the data we need from the records table. And if I change this to Abby, so you will see we got to put the pull a list for Abby. Uh, from there, and uh, the status, I can do things like this if this is a billable note, if this is not billable. So you will see the only record is put from this for Abby. And let me just change it back to billable. And then you have this time range filter. Uh, you can pick a date. So if I'm going to do a date change here. So you will see it's going to filter the data, uh, but this is just my design. So uh, like a demo for you to create a report like this, but you, all can, you, can, you can always do some change, some customization here in Google Sheets if you're familiar with this query formula and the other things. And uh, just to show you something important here. So we also have some hidden values here. So if I reset, so you will see here how I build the query formula. So the reference of the query uh, is from E uh, E seven. So it's basically this is going to be the query we use it to get the data from. Uh, so you can do some change here, like uh, for example, if you don't want to use billable, you can replace it with something else, right? So just change the formula. And then it's going to show you the result you, you need it. Uh, you can customize it. And uh, just want to show you here because this is very important. Uh, if you change something here uh, accidentally, or it's going to break this report. Uh, okay, so let me just uh, change it back to this white font color so we won't see it in the report. And that's about the formula. And once you have the data you uh, you needed, and uh, you will be able to create some chart if you want to show them in the report. So you can build some chart from the data you have. And uh, so this is also some demo for you guys. You can always build your own chart if you want to see something different from your site. Uh, just uh, preference. Uh, different data, want to show you the client to your client, all right? And then uh, another thing here we have to remember is we have some named fields. Like for example, I have, I have this name field called report client. So all the named range in this tab, they are prefixed with report. So report client, report cost, report date, report end. So make sure you follow this rule. Uh, if you want to define your own custom uh, values, your attributes, you want to bring them into this report because we are using this in our email, okay? So our email body, we're going to use it in our code. So if you have some new ones, you want to change some of the values and uh, you have a new field, like for example, I don't know what kind of new field I want to add, but you can create a new name field. And uh, like for example, if I'm trying to do something like uh, like report new value, so I can do something like this. And then in this cell, any value you entered here, we can use it in our code. Okay, so let me show you next next step. 
Okay, so that's basically how you customize your report. And uh, then I can send this report to the client. And these two fields, this field here uh, is where, so this is, should be the, the email address of your client. Yes, right now I'm using my own email address for all of them uh, for testing. Uh, so you also can do this from your side. So for the first time, you should be able to, uh, you will enter your own email address before sending this to the client uh, just for testing, right? And uh, then you can always change them later uh, after the test. So let me just send me my, uh, a test report. So this is for Abby and uh, so now the report is sent. Let me check my inbox here. Okay, so this is the report I got from, so this is for Abby and this is the report you will see here, the data here and the chart is also here. And you will see here, this is the email and you can customize the information here. Like the Abby is the name of the client. Uh, they are dynamic uh, depending on the client. And also we have Abby here and you will see here, this is start time, the end time and uh, the total hours and total costs. So all, we can put all of this information in our email body. So if you want to customize this email, you have go to the code to do that. So go to extensions and open the app script editor is going to open the project for you. So let me show you where you can customize this information. So the first, the first place you will need to update is the, uh, the subject of the email if you want to do the change. So I'm including the report client, uh, the client name in the subject. So this is how I do it. So I just uh, put a placeholder here in the subject line and then it's going to do the update for you. And if you want to include something else, maybe report hours or report, or report costs. So you can do that too. So this is from this value, right? So this is the report costs and uh, this is for report hours. So any value you can find in this report, you can use it in the code. So I'm just changed back. And if you have a CC or BCC, you can add it here and just separate them by comma. And then I'm going to send the email to the client, but also maybe CC or BCC, someone else, okay? And then this in this email.html file, you will be able to customize your email. And just follow this pattern here. So if you have a report, so this is the, uh, the name of the client, so I'm using report client. So just uh, data dot report client. So this is a reference to that data, uh, the name of the client. And uh, other things here, you will see this pattern, uh, report start and report end. And this is how I'm doing here, report hours cost. So we also report by someone else. So this is the name we have here. Uh, okay, so this is how you do the change. In, for the email body. And uh, I think that's almost all we have here so far for this project you can do. So basically uh, for time tracking for personal, I think it was more for the personal use case. And uh, I'm using this for my own clients so I can send them a a report for the uh, maybe for every single month I'm going to send them a report like this so I can they can they can pay me by the the cost here uh, and I think you can use it for the similar case if you are you uh, manage your own project uh, like this and uh, I think that's about this video and let me know if you have any questions thank you bye bye